In Berkeley, California today, a melee. Violence flared between pro and anti-Trump demonstrators. Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you, many kings and prophets have desired to see what you see and have not seen it. To hear what you hear and have not heard it. I thank you, Father, for hiding these things from the learned and the wise and revealing them to the innocent and the simple. Minutes after the shooting, police rushed to secure central Paris clearing panicked bystanders away to safety. In this video from social media, and not yet confirmed, you can see two armed men, possibly police, moving near a vehicle. French officials say a man armed with a Kalashnikov opened fire on police officers. One of them was killed and two more were injured, and the attacker himself was shot dead. French President Francois Hollande, in a special televised address, confirmed tonight that the shooting was a terrorist attack. Forensic teams are still gathering evidence at the scene on one of Paris's busiest boulevards. Already, ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attack, and they've named the attacker, Abu Youssef al belgiki which indicates he's from Belgium, although French authorities have not yet confirmed that. Tens of thousands of protesters took to the streets of Venezuela's capital city of Caracas in what was called the mother of all marches against socialist president Nicolas Maduro. Anti-government protests are taking place across the country. A 17-year-old boy died after being shot in the head while walking near a protest. And the mayor of the western city of San Cristobal told the Associated Press a 23-year-old woman was killed by gunfire from pro-government groups surrounding protesters there. Eight people have died since the protest started three weeks ago. Venezuela's Supreme Court decided to take away the powers of the opposition-controlled Congress. That decision was reversed, but it was too late. The opposition was already inflamed. The socialist country is in economic crisis, facing food shortages, triple-digit inflation, and widespread crime. And there are accusations the Maduro government is becoming a full-blown dictatorship. The government has put hundreds of protesters in jail and stood by as groups who support the government have violently attacked opposition members of Congress. President Vladimir Putin's recent stroll among the glaciers along with reindeer pulling Russian soldiers, was the buildup to today's unveiling of Russia's newest military base, Trefoil, located just inside the Arctic Circle. The PR offensive comes as Moscow moves to solidify its claim to the Arctic's huge oil and gas reserves that Russia believes to be worth trillions of dollars. While most of the base remains off limits, the Kremlin offered up an internet tour showing dorm style accommodations that can house 150 troops for 18 month stints. The facility is Russia's second with four others to come as well as an airfield. The US has its own base in nearby Greenland. But the Russian buildup, the largest since the Cold War, has raised red flags in Washington. Secretary of Defense James Mattis has warned that Russia must not be allowed to dominate the Arctic. But for now, it appears Russia's flag is planted firmly on top of the world. In Berkeley, California today, a melee. Violence flared between pro and anti-Trump demonstrators. A clash complete with firecrackers and pepper spray. Police in riot gear standing by. At least 15 demonstrators are now under arrest. This on a day of nationwide protests scheduled for tax day, April 15th. New York, LA, Washington, and Chicago. In dozens of cities, protesters demanded President Trump release his tax returns. So what does your sign say? Well, you can read it. It says 75% of Americans say, release your taxes, and that's what we want Donald Trump to do. Today, they were even marching on Mar-a-Lago. He's scamming the United States. He's costing millions of dollars. 
by coming to Mar-a-Lago every weekend to play golf. At that first debate with Hillary Clinton, Trump promised he'd eventually release his returns. I'm under a routine audit, and it'll be released, and as soon as the audit's finished, it'll be released. Later, a change of heart. He's not going to release his tax returns. We litigated this all through the election. People didn't care. They voted for him. We do care. We are here. We demand to see his taxes. But plenty of Trump supporters disagree. I think he's doing pretty good. I think you have to give him a chance. I mean, he's a rookie. And he has to get used to the, the politics of the game. Once he gets used to it, I think he'll be all right. Meanwhile, an apocalyptic vision revealed on government-run television in North Korea. It aired footage of a musical that imagines missiles engulfing America in flames. The show was part of ceremonies marking the birth of the country's founder. The regime has a long history of threats against the U.S. The other major story tonight, the new threat from North Korea. The escalating war of words, North Korea now threatening missile tests every week. Tonight, a defiant North Korea pledging to conduct missile tests on a weekly, monthly and yearly basis, accusing the White House of pushing the situation there to the brink of war. The summer nuclear war may break out at any moment on the peninsula. But now from President Trump, a blunt warning. Any message from North Korea? You gotta behave. In Pyongyang this weekend, Kim Jong Un's military might on full display, including what appeared to be a new long range ballistic missile, canisters of green camo mounted on huge transporters. But amid that show of force, an embarrassing failure, a botched missile test, the weapon exploding seconds after launch. And tonight, questions about whether it was cyber sabotaged by the U.S. There's a very strong belief that the Americans, through cyber methods, uh, have been successful on several occasions in interrupting uh, these sort of tests and making them fail. Tensions between the U.S. and North Korea now at a dangerous high. North Korea is a problem. The problem will be taken care of. But just what that means, unclear. The era of strategic patience is over. In South Korea, Vice President Pence visiting the demilitarized zone, delivering a warning of his own. Just in the past two weeks, the world witnessed the strength and resolve of our new president in actions taken in Syria and Afghanistan. North Korea would do well not to test his resolve. Nearly 30,000 American troops are currently stationed in South Korea. We visited one key base just 48 miles from the border. Here, they are at the ready. Their slogan, fight tonight. There aren't many places I go into where it says fight tonight in giant letters. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a little frightening. Absolutely. But uh, to, for us, it's our day-to-day -day training because we don't know when that call is going to come. As for the commander in chief, late today when the White House was pressed on whether action was coming on North Korea, Press Secretary Sean Spicer saying the president holds his cards close to the vest. I don't think that you're going to see the president drawing red lines in the sand. Today, when asked his next move, President Trump with just a two-word answer. You'll see.